Today we're here at Kudamundra for the Boxcombe Grassy Woodland Workshop. The workshop is for landholders to learn a bit about the benefits of managing the woodland. To form groups and either pick any of the strategies. We've got Karina Roman doing a social survey session with landholders and we've got Mason Crane doing a grazing management and plant identification. The Boxcam Grassy Woodland is was a threatened ecological community. Uh, the vegetation's made up predominantly dominated by three eucalypts. That's the uh, Blakely's red gum, white box, or yellow box. Now that threatened ecological community isn't just the plants, it's all the birds and animals that rely on it as well, like your superb parrots, squirrel gliders, swift parrots. So we're really about uh, listening and learning from landholders in terms of what initiatives they would like to see implemented in a project like the Boxcom Woodlands project. So we can make sure that we tailor projects, this one and in the future, to fit landholders' needs to make sure that we are protecting special areas like the Boxcombe Woodlands. I've got existing remnant bush, uh, grassy box woodland on the property. So it's been a case of identifying what's there and being able to improve what's there. And that's been fencing it off and basically putting it into conservation and biodiversity. We need to work with the landholders and especially in a in a project as important as this one because we are asking the landholders to do these practices so we want to understand what the value is for them and how we can possibly help them. The workshops are beneficial because I've been able to improve the grassy box woodland that I have on the, my property. This threatened ecological community is so important for agricultural areas because this is what sustains our environmental services all the insects and pollinators and birds that eat pests and help pollinate canola crops and our orchards and that sort of thing, all rely on native vegetation close to these areas. And that native vegetation is predominantly box gum woodland. I find it quite surprising what we found here and when Mason goes through it, like all the wildlife that essentially relies on the box gum to survive and to thrive. Um, and all these little things that we often take for granted is, yeah, there's a deep appreciation of that now. Well, in this patch of bush, you can see there's a number of different grasses. Often there's, you know, half a dozen or more species of grasses. In a good condition site, you can have up to 12 species of forbs, just within a 20 by 20 metre area. So they can be really diverse. So some of the main threats to these woodlands is one, clearing, and that includes clearing paddock trees. Second, is continuous grazing by livestock. Often spraying can be a big issue, like on the edges of remnants, but also for a lot of the paddock tree type landscapes and particularly where there's aerial spraying. Other threats to some of the biodiversity in these areas can be from introduced species such as foxes, rabbits, deer. Landholders should definitely take the opportunity and jump on, on a project like this. It's a great opportunity not only to learn, but also to, to leave a, a stronger legacy behind on their land. Today is a good day. I think everyone wants to learn more about the box gum woodland, what are the species that are in it, but also interested to see what other landowners are doing and what are the opportunities that are out there. To have these box gum woodlands on your place, whether they be paddock trees or patches or even the reveg that you do, I guess adds enjoyment to the landowner to be out there, adds that bit of green in the landscape when everything's pretty dry. It provides habitat for the birds, so adds interest as you're moving the stock. Oh look, in terms of the farmscape, it improves it dramatically. And without it, it's somewhat devoid. Local land are really proud to be working with landholders in the community.